Bluegrass music covers a lot of ground. We're not just talking the back 40 either. Every Thursday at 6 p.m. on Chaos, American Anecdotes covers as much of that ground as possible. From its deep roots in the rural south, through today's innovative young stars, tell me, darling, please tell me, join Jim, Joe, James, Ruby Rue, and Paul for American Anecdotes. Every Thursday at 6 p.m. on your listener-supported, volunteer-powered community radio station, KAOS 89.3 FM. Comments made during the broadcast of No Bones About It do not necessarily reflect the views of the staff, management, or underwriters of KAOS Radio or the Evergreen State College. Opinions expressed are those of the host and the guests on the program.
And you're tuned in to KAOS 89.3 FM Olympia. And we have Che Jim on the line. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Good, good. I uh, appreciate you calling. Um, and and uh, uh, we're waiting for your mom. But uh, beforehand, maybe we could uh, just introduce yourself. We're going to be talking a little bit about a project you guys are working together on, uh, the Big Mountain uh, Sustainable Housing Land Recovery Project. It sounds exciting, and I'm really uh, grateful for your willingness to give us a call and tell us what's going on. So thank you. Absolutely. Do we get uh, want to uh, introduce stuff a little bit, or, or or I can do it? I think, but it's always better coming from you in case uh, I miss something. Oh yeah, sure. Um, my name is Jay Jim. I was uh, born and raised in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. I am uh, I am Dene and uh, Ottawa native. Uh, Dene from my dad's side, uh, Ottawa from my mom's side. I uh, um. And now, as you know, working on on, the, on on a few different projects, I currently live in Phoenix, Arizona, um, and uh, do a lot of work down here with the uh, with the native communities. Um, and now, I uh, at the moment, I I, I I do a lot of uh, work with uh, rehab centers down here. So down here and around the Phoenix Tucson area, I, I reach out and do a lot of different types of. Uh, um, Work with, again, work with a lot of uh, addiction issues and, and uh, learn uh, to uh, teach these these men and women about um, how to overcome addiction through Native culture, Native teaching, song, and, uh, and uh, education um, at the moment. So uh, I am also, also a father of two. I got a, I got a little girl, a little boy. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty much uh, a little bit about myself. Right, but so, uh, um, Jay, how did you get involved uh, in, in the, this work? How, how did that How did that come about? Um, well, I guess to um, start off, you know, to I, I like to think that I've always been involved. I like to Hello? think that uh, yep, you're, again, you're, you're uh, live with us. Go ahead, uh, just uh, Alicia. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're just uh, thanks for joining us. So we're we're talking. He's uh, telling us a little bit about Chase. Telling us a little bit about how he got involved. So when he's done with that, we we'll get you to introduce yourself. And uh, thank you so much for calling in. Okay, great. Good hearing your voice. Yeah, same here. So I'm. Okay, Jay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so um, yeah. I, again, I like to think that I've always been involved. Um, since I was a since I was a young boy, I've, I've always been. Um, taken out to the uh, to the uh, Big Mountain area on the Navajo Reservation um, for different cultural and and and, and spiritual uh, uh, gatherings. And uh, um, I, I was born in, in May, and even in, in the first few months of my life, my parents made it a big a big point to take me out there and uh, get different types of blessings and and uh, different types of. Uh, uh, they can get me involved in, in, in the ceremonies early in life. And so I like to think that I've always been involved. And, uh, you know, when my mom and uh, my family had came to me about this project, I, I, I definitely wanted to show my support because I definitely have a have a, uh, have a connection as many as, as well as many other families out there. There are, there are a lot of families that, that have spiritually grown from the big mountain area. Absolutely. You know, I, uh, I, again, I was born and raised in Flagstaff, but all of my spiritual growth has come from that land. So, you know, when, when you go out there and you see a lot of the living conditions and you see a lot of the struggles and a lot of the resistances and uh, protests and stuff going on uh, around Native issues, whether it be land or, or, or uh, housing, water, uh, or financial issues that go on out there, I've always, always wanted to be a part of that. I always, always had shown my support through, through uh, uh, spirituality by going out there and talking with the people and, and, and bringing, also bringing a lot of... Uh, Understanding and knowledge to a lot of uh, as many people as I possibly can, so that they are educated and they could help as well. So you know, um, that's that's a little bit about you know how I got involved. And again, it's, it's it's primarily because I feel like for me, and again, a lot of other people that we we were brought into, this, we were born into this. So um, we're uh, we're involved because we're we're a part of this as well. Absolutely, we were just talking today about how our path is already laid out. Front of us, and as long as we're following the the ancestors, that we're we're in that right path. And there's a, a large uh, community here in Olympia that uh, um, 
prior me being ever here in Olympia that has that big mountain connection here from uh, the folks in uh, Olympia. I know Media Island from here, Rick Fellows, and Mon- Gary Galbraith that's uh, um, here at Chaos. Uh, many, many, many others that have uh, traveled from uh, Olympia to Big Mountain to lend that support. So we have that uh, strong connection here in, in, the, in this community. So, Aleticia, how are you? Yes, I'm doing great. Thanks, Raven. Yeah, so I just got to give you a little chance to introduce yourself and uh, appreciate you, uh, um, you reaching out and, and uh, calling in and sharing with us. I think this is a great project, and I'm hoping that uh, that it could, uh, you know, expand out to many, 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 many elders because I know the living conditions that are mm-hmm. with some of our elders, especially those that uh, the traditional people that um, should be taken care of in this way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The 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 um, Big Mountain Sustainable Housing and Land Development Project really is for the people of Big Mountain, and it's going to serve, we believe, as really a demonstration of how green housing and sustainable housing on the on the Navajo Reservation um, can be able to use and follow our traditions of being able caretakers and stewards of the land. So it extends what we already believe in by having green housing. And uh, this project wants to do this for Louise Benali, and and we want to do this in a in a way that again respects the land by being a green um, a, a green building a green inspired hogan that would be straw bale with passive solar. Well, can we talk a little bit about? Um, uh, sorry, uh, Louise Benali, just a little bit on uh, um, her background and. Uh, yeah, I'd like yeah. to go from there. I just uh, for, for some of our folks that don't know who she is. Yeah, yeah. but um, I wanted to just you know a brief history of the Big Mountain because I don't know uh, if, if you had a chance to to, to uh, talk about that with the, with your listeners. But Big Mountain is also called Black Mesa, and it's located uh, it's northeast of Flagstaff, Arizona, in east of Tuba City. And it's on the Colorado Plateau uh, near Cayente, Arizona. And it covers about uh, 4,000 square miles of plateau land. And it's high desert, and it's traditionally a traditional homeland of over, of over uh, 16,000 Diné people, or Navajo people, and ha- who have been there for thousands of years. It is a land that is a disputed land because when in 1969, it um, it became uh, uh, United, the, the energy companies became aware that it was the largest deposit of coal in the United States. It was so it had so much coal that you could walk down, and that's why the name Black Mesa came. You could walk along and you could see it glistening, the black uh, coal glistening that was at the high it was at the surface of the land, and it began to be disputed because now the Peabody coal wanted to go in and they wanted to strip mine and it because they were going to make billions of dollars um, by strip mining that land and it was the traditional people the traditional families at big mountain who resisted this movement to strip mine their their traditional lands they ran into um a number of uh, unjust laws and policies and human rights abuses then ensued and the 1974 Hopi Navajo Land Settlement Act, or PL 93-531, divided the land and gave uh, jurisdiction of Navajo land to the Hopi, who in turn then were willing to lease the land to energy companies for strip mining. And this did occur, and we had about 12,000 Diné people who have been forcibly removed from this land of Big Mountain, uh, which is the largest forced removal act since the 1880s. So today, 40 years later, we still have strip mining for coal. It has slowed down, but we still have strip mining going on. And we also still have traditional Diné people who are resisting relocation. There's a handful of families who are resisting. And they are also, of course, fighting uh, for their human rights. And they have also been witness to the ecological uh, devastation that has occurred because of strip mining of their traditional land. And who is Louise Bernali? Louise Benali during this time in the, in the 1970s was a teenager and, uh, her mother and, uh, her family were part of the Big Mountain Resisting, Resistor Movement 
And by the way, by the way, the name resistors came from the U.S. government. They called the people who would not follow force, who resisted forced relocation off of traditional land as resistors. And Louise's family was a part of that. And Louise was a teenager at the time, and I met her because the Sundance, and I, and I think Che talked about that, had come to Big Mountain in 1983. And when her, she was a part of that Sundance um, dancing there for the land, for the prayers, and people from all over the world came to be able to uh, pray for the people and to witness the human rights abuses that were occurring at Big Mountain. And Louise was a teenager. She became an interpreter for the, for the elders because the elders at Big Mountain did not speak English. They were still very traditional. They only spoke their Navajo language. And so when these new laws were enacted and uh, police, the Hopi police, and the U.S. Marshals came to their doors and knocked, knocked at their hogans and told them to leave, they didn't even know what they were. They, they couldn't speak English to talk to them because they didn't know, know English. They were that traditional. And so Louise became a uh, interpreter for the people. And, and she grew up um, doing this, and all these years, 40 years later, she continues to live on that land and to resist relocation. She's one of a handful of families that continue to resist for, forcible relocation by the U.S. government and the unjust 1974 Hopi uh, Navajo Relocation Act. So she has been chosen to be a recipient of this family because not only did they uh, forcibly remove the families, but their tactics to be able to get others off the land was to not allow them to build. So for 40 years, the families of Big Mountain have not been able to fix their homes, build new roofs, put in new plumbing if they needed it, if they had it, um, um, be able to work on their doors. And if you go to www.bigmountainhousingproject.org, you're going to see a picture of Louise and a picture of her Hogan and the way the Hogan looks. And you can see when you take a look at it, um, when it rains, water comes in because she can't build a new roof. The, um, the doorway is coming off because the wood that holds up the doorway is rotten after 40 years and not being replaced. And uh, she has a dirt floor, which is traditional, but it's also very house living. And she's only been able to lay down flooring on half the hogam. We want to see Louise to be able to stay on her land and to be able to um, stay there, live there in a livable, safe, a livable home. And this is why she's been chosen to be recipient of sustainable of a sustainable house. You know, a couple of things come to mind. Uh when you're talking, uh, uh -huh. first of all, like the resistance uh, uh, coming from the United States government coming in, it seems like it's mm -hmm. a jurisdictional problem because of the traditional borders, for one. Then Peabody right. Coal Mine, you know, coming in, and uh, I know the aquifers there uh, That's right. at, at, the, at that time were probably pretty plentiful um, compared to the way they are today and fighting for that mm -hmm. water. And, and so... Living in those conditions when, in her housing, because I know folks that have been down there, and some of the elders, the, like her, uh, are living without without any roof on and no mm -hmm. insulation. And I know it gets a little bit warm, but not that much, not that warm in the mountains where they're at. So, mm -hmm. how do, um, I kind of I kind of know how you got involved, but all your role in it, bringing all this together, um, how did that? How did you come come into play to 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 be a part of the uh, Big Mountain Sustainable Housing How did Project. Well, um, there's a you know there's a teaching that we have um, as Sundancers, and I'm a part of the Sundance religion and have been uh, for 30 years. And one of the teachings that we have is, of course, that we give back. And um, I was um, um, aware of of the living conditions of the people of Big Mountain for many years. And I had the opportunity um, a couple years ago to go back out there and to talk to Louise and to talk to some of the other families and to look at their homes. And I was so saddened. I mean, I mean, Raven, I was, I started crying to see the living conditions of these beautiful, of beautiful people who, by virtue of being uh, native people on land that is rich with coal, had to live in such conditions. 
And these are proud people who are sustainable and they're living, have always taken care of themselves and their families. And now they can't even have a home to live in that is livable. Uh-huh. And it's a human rights abuse. Right. And I talked to Louise and I talked to other people and I said, let's do something. And that's how this project was born. Yeah. And it's, uh, uh, you know, just hearing you talk it, it and knowing, because I, I, I've seen some of them, some of our traditional people, the way that they're, that um, in the old way they'd be taken care of, you know, that mm-hmm. uh, that these conditions wouldn't be 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 there. And I know so many that live like that, and I it gets me upset as much as it, it does you. I can tell, and mm-hmm. it's important for all of us to give back, but it's important for people to 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 hear what's going on. And I I'm really mm-hmm. appreciative for both you and Jay uh, for for sharing with us about that. And but how can we we can help? How what would I know uh, um, we go to uh, the web page, and uh, um, from there, can you kind of guide us through? Sure. So if you go to the web page, again, www.bigmountainhousingproject.org, all one word, and if you go to um, You Can Help, and you click on that icon, it's going to have a place where you can donate. And um, we have uh, right now we have a campaign with Indiegogo, well, we're raising money, and so we have a challenge today that all activists and those with the, the those who who are feeling this for our elders that you that you give ten dollars today. Um, you can go to that website. Um, you can you can click on um, Indiegogo and give through Indiegogo, and, or you can click on and give straight away through um, Visa or Master Charge. And there's both two icons that you can pick either way, and you can give today. And another way that you can also give is to volunteer. Because when we begin to build, we would like to see youth come out and to learn how to build hogans and to learn how to bring traditional, sustainable housing. And if you are interested in doing that, you can click on contact, contact me, because it goes straight to my email. Contact me, and I will put you on the list so that when we stop building, I'll contact you to come out and help us. I love that you have here um, uh, Community Rebuilds, uh, um, their uh, supporter, and then uh, Lakota mm-hmm. Healing Way Center um, yeah. are involved. Uh, we talk a little bit about, about that. Well, the Lakota Healing Way Center, um, he's located here in uh, Denver, Colorado, which is where I'm at right now, and they're our fiscal agent. Mm-hmm. And they're, they are a powerful group of um, caring uh, people, uh, uh, whom are, again, have a healing center for drug and alcohol. And uh, you can go to their website as well and just put in Lakota Healing Way Center, and you can also give to us through, through that, through their website, and also you can see what they're doing and how you might be able to help with them. Yeah, I, I love the, the relationship building you know, that, that happens mm-hmm. and uh, how we, we, it comes with that teaching also that I know Harold Belmont talks about around here that we need each other. We just don't know how much we need each other, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's really mm-hmm. important. And uh, you're, you're also, uh, at, uh, says here, uh, you know, help build a, we need a build one straw, Vail Hogan inspired home with passion and solar energy source. You know, a clear thousand square feet of land around the Hogan. You need help mm-hmm. doing this stuff, and then planting traditional, way or organic garden and native, native seeds. Can we talk a little bit about that? that that's exciting too. Yeah, but Weez herself is a traditional way um, agriculturalist, and uh, she's been doing this for for over a decade. And she has been traveling around to different um, native communities, showing them how to uh, grow food for their families. And it's really her vision to see a traditional way garden is with every Native family to feed their family uh, organically and traditionally to traditional foods. And she has a great vision to do that, and we'd like to see her continue that work. That's awesome. And, uh, again, it's uh, bigmountainhousingproject.org, and uh, it's nicely designed. Uh, Did you do that? You did design this yourself. Uh, design what the the web the, the web, web page. Oh, the web. No, actually, it was um, by Azana's Ba Jim, yeah. and uh, we call uh, her nickname is Chio XO Sochi, which is her middle name, and she is the web designer, and she's the one who built that beautiful website. 
And also the logo that we have, which is the Hogan, you can see the four colors of the Lakota colors, of uh, the yellow and the white, the black and the red for the four directions. And then there's a Hogan and beautiful corn and, of course, uh, green leaves just representing uh, uh, life itself. And she, that was her, her logo as well. We're very proud of that logo. Yeah, it's really nice. And uh, there's a Facebook uh, page, folks. Uh, you can just type in Big Mountain Sustainable Housing Land Recovery Project and check them out and follow, follow them through Facebook. And uh, just trying to, you know, uh, as, we're, as we're working um, towards this, I, I think it's really exciting. I know this is the, the, the first uh elder that you were going to reach out to and uh mm-hmm. so what are the plans in the once once that's done um to reach out more and more to different people um in, in that area yeah. or beyond it is in that area in particular because again the big mountain area has a great need for the people to be able to um um have um uh, you know safe homes livable homes so we look at this hogan as being a demonstration hogan <laughs> Well, others can come and literally take a look and uh, tour it and see how it's built and uh, see see its beauty and how it fits into the land and how and how it's built with materials that's sustainable. So we look at this as a demonstration project um, for others to be inspired to to build to rebuild their homes in uh, to, with with sustainable uh, materials. All right, and so. Uh so if I'm hearing you right, what's well, exciting if people are down in that area or want to come down in that area, they can come down and they can learn how to build these and help. Is that yeah? So, and yeah. Uh, they just have to contact you. That's right. They can just again go to our um, on our website, go to contact, and they can just email me and tell me that they have their interest um, to um, to participate in the building of the Hogan. The other thing we need too is that there's builders out there and people who have um, materials such as straw bale and other sustainable materials that they would like to donate, we would gladly accept all donations. And, uh, uh, Che, uh, are you still with us? Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if, uh, you know, uh, you're down in that area yourself. Are, um, are you going to be um, part of the, the people to come in and help train in that, in that, in that area? Absolutely. Um, you know, something you have to uh, remember is that whenever you are dealing with the, uh, the land or you're dealing with a lot of the struggle out there, it, 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 it always re- uh, revolves around a way of life. It revolves around um, a traditional teachings um, of a people who who um, consider this land a very much a part of their family as, as anyone. It's a part of their identity. It's a part of who they are. So, you know... Reaching out and, and and moving forward, especially now, and when you when you start digging into the land and you start altering different things going on out there, you have to think of it from a spiritual perspective too. So we want to make sure that we're also doing these things, um, not only economically friendly, environmentally friendly, but also spiritually friendly. So you know, from from the time that I've spent out here so far, we've also gone out and done a lot of. Uh, um, uh, Understanding and, and 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 trying to um, bring ceremonial aspects to this thing, and like, like my mom had mentioned before, that you know we do have you know some connections to also Lakota people, and, and a lot of and even our logo has Lakota colors on there because back back uh, you know a, a, a couple decades ago, the um, the Lakota actually got involved with the same struggle, and they actually brought down uh, various ceremonies, including the sun dance, to uh, to to aid the 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 people down here the uh, the Dene people so in, in 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 a spiritual in a spiritual reinforcement in in a, in, a, in a spiritual way so we also are doing a lot of a lot of that thing so a lot of my time is spent here a lot of all of this project is still is still growing we still have a lot of things that we need to cover a lot of things that we need to get to by way of donations and uh, making connections and uh, reaching out to other other groups, but we also got to make sure that we're we're um, addressing things in a spiritual matter. So a lot of the work that has been done so far has from, come from a spiritual standpoint because this is a spiritual struggle we're dealing with here. So um, so far, that's a lot of what we've done. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I like what Alaticia said about um, how uh, if you've ever been down in the area, which I've been down in the area, the people are very 
they're in their heart and they're very proud people and uh for them to reach out that's another thing and so to, to be able to do it in a good way and follow those protocols i think are very very important and that's one of the things i think that the outside world sometimes forgets yeah that's that's absolutely true and you know um a lot of a lot of our our growing uh, that, that that we're doing is they you are know, reaching out to other 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 uh, indigenous people, other tribes, and other 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 um, you know walks of life, so that they can bring that support to us uh, uh, spiritually. And, and this is this is not necessarily you know it, it, it's a spiritual issue, but you know it's also a human being issue. This is just you know a lot of the things going on out there. Is is uh it's it's not right for anyone, regardless of where you're from, race, color, or creed. It doesn't really matter, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, to have to have that other support and be able to reach out and accept that support as well is, is a is a big thing, and it's very important. And uh, like you had mentioned before, you know, uh, you mentioned individuals saying that you know we need to we we don't under, we don't understand we don't know how much we really need other people, and this is the exact this is a perfect example for that. That you know even now you know the whole reason why we're we're talking on here is to get support from all around the, the country and all around the world, hopefully, mm-hmm. that we can get uh, attention drawn here and get education so people can understand that there are things going on all around the world. And it's not just, you know, with the Dene people, but there are also other struggles and other things going on all around. And we, we need to be aware of that. We need to support them. And I love that the project that you're working on, both of you working on, that it's a, it's a solution to, uh, mm-hmm. to help. You know, it's uh, sometimes uh, I know that... Uh, I'm going to just say with the the feds and the states, they think they're helping, but they're not really helping. And this is a solution. You know, we're helping our people with to to, to live on the land. Like if I like I said, I've I've seen some of those houses and no roof, and elders and the conditions they live in. It's just uh, absolutely insane here in, in this country that uh, that was very wealthy before the the West got here. Mm-hmm. And to to not take care of the people and that that it's also to me I, I'm learning more and more about the trust responsibility that we all have with each other, and mm-hmm. uh, and the things that have happened and these the lines that have been uh, drawn they were never there before. Mm-hmm. People exactly. tra- people traveled all around and they helped each other and uh, we have to I feel we have to get back to that way um, if we want to continue as people. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And again, you're, you know, when you're dealing with an issue like this, you're dealing with people who have a, a very strong connection to to the earth. And something I, I don't know if you uh, if you've touched base on this, but a lot of those people they they make a living off that land because again, it's a, it's a big part of their identity. It's who they are. It's where they've been. It's where they've always existed. And they've always they've always uh, you know backed that up. <laughs> so you know, one of the things too is a lot of the the um, with the forced relocation, they're also confiscating a lot of sheep out there. Yeah. So a lot of people have uh, one of the policies and and um, restrictions that they have on the people out there is only allowed, allotted a certain amount of sheep. I think it's maybe 20 or 30. I don't know the exact number. But a lot of those people out there have much bigger herds because that's this need to sustain their lives. That's what they need to live off of. And now that they're in recent recently they've been confiscating sheep in an effort to get them to leave or give them incentive to leave. And so this housing project is also going to aid in that and that as well by giving them. Um, some reinforcement to maintain that. So even if stuff like that does happen, that they're going to have some some things to fall back on and help them and keep them on that on that land that is a big part of who they are. And that's true with everyone. And that's true with anyone that you any any group of people you go to. That's what you're going to find that they're going to have a strong connection to that land. And if you take that away from them, it's an attack on their identity. Right. It's, it takes away that uh, who they are as a people, and and then it separates. Uh, you, you know, you don't have the land. You know, you can still be a native person, but without the land, it's um, it's hard to insert your sovereignty. Exactly. You know, and so to take all those the traditional ways from the people, it's a, it is a form of genocide. Mm-hmm. And, but what yeah. I what I again what I love what you guys are doing is that you're, it, I've in my heart know if I didn't have to worry about where I'm living, I, mm-hmm. it frees up a whole lot of energy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you could yep. you could work on things that you need to work and to take care of things so as these things happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got a few. One, of the, one of the beautiful things that Louise said to me is, is that she turned to me and she says, "You know, Ollie, I just want to be able to go home." And that statement alone tells you of the love and the connection 
that she has, she has with her lad at Big Mountain, and she just wants to be able to go home. And she, and she has that right, a human right to be able to do that. Absolutely. So we, we got a couple more minutes, so I want to give you guys a, 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 a again, I appreciate uh, this conversation. It's great. And, uh, but, uh, chance to speak out of, uh, of anything that we haven't touched on. Uh, you know, I say this all the time, but, uh, I, uh, things don't. If we don't say it why, why it's here, it'll follow you around until you do. I have an uncle that tells me that all the time, so I like to have my guests. You know, if if it's something that's on your heart that you want to share with our relatives, uh, this would be the time. I'd appreciate it. Jay. Yeah, I um, I just want to say to everyone that's uh, that's listening that uh, you know, it's it, it's really important to to us as Native people, that we form connections, that we um, understand what's going on in the world around us. You know, this, this, is, this is one aspect, this is one struggle that's going on, but this is very small in comparison to what's going on in the world. Um, no matter where you're from, where you're at, you know, you, you, you hop on and you, you talk to the right people, you're going you're gonna to see that everybody has, 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 um, has struggles, everybody has problems going on, and it's important that we um, become educated on those, that we understand what's going on, because one of the most frustrating things that we run into is the fact that nobody knows what we're talking about. When you bring this up, this is an issue that's been going on for a very long time, for, again, since, since, uh, since 1974, so, so for, for, for 40 years, this relocation has been imposing on, on the Dine people who want nothing more than just to live the way that, they, that they're that they you know meant to live, and they don't have that option, and that's true for any any indigenous people, or you know, uh, no matter where you look and where you go, you know, maybe, maybe not even an indigenous issue. You can look in other countries and you see that this stuff goes on all the time. And you know, we're at a time in our you know we're at a time in our in our existence where we we need to come together. We need to come together and we need to um, understand and at least be educated so you can speak to these things and so that you know that you don't just get faded away in, in time or whatever or whatever you know the case may be but you know um, i i ask that everyone at least know what's going on here in the in, in, uh, in the big mountain area but also what's going on at home and you know we can we can we can form connections we can support um we can we can form groups and support groups for people around the country and this is just one this is just one start of, uh, of, of one fight that we need to take care of but you know, we, we we're we're also looking towards other other things, and that's something that I'm I'm very big about. Is I, I want to be able to understand a little bit of what's going on everywhere. Everyone I talk to, I want to learn something, understand something. I think that's important. That's the way that's supposed to be. So, um, mm. if anything else, that's that's the message I want to send out there. And um, mm -hmm. you know, this is this is uh, I think the ultimate goal of what we're doing. You know, we can support them in a in a in a, in a financial, economic, and whatever it may be in, in any way, but at the end of the day, it's all about just having mm -hmm. compassion and, 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 and knowing what it's like to uh, take care and take care of somebody else, which is a value that we live that we live by as, a, as Native people and as human beings. Absolutely. So. Mm. And it's their inherent right to live where they want to live because they always were there. Mm -hmm. And it's real important for people to understand that, that... Uh, it's not some a right that was given to him. It's inherent from Creator that that's, that's right. her land and, and and that's her right to be there. Mm -hmm. That's so right. That's right. Louise wants to go home, and um and uh, it's been an honor. Thank you so much, Raven, for um, allowing us to come on and to talk about the project mm -hmm. and to ask ask our listeners to please give so that we can um we can build this we can build a home for Louise can go home and continue her work. Uh, what can we just say that web page one more time? It's www.bigmountainhousingproject.org. Great. And uh, again, I appreciate you calling. We miss you up this way. I know uh, at, uh, talking to people, they're, oh, yeah, we should come back. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so I appreciate both of you taking the time. I know everybody's busy, and it's. Uh, yeah, I think it's you. important work uh, that we get this out there. and. Um, this is one way we could help. Um, I think also um, help that healing that needs to ha that, yeah. that that that, that is that. happening. Yep. I think it is yep. happening, but we need to mm -hmm. keep doing it because all of us have been touched by colonialization. But the native people, it's the deepest wound. Mm 
Mm. And once we heal that, I think that as a nation, as you were talking, Jay, I think that we can really come together. We mm -hmm. have we have to recognize that that happened. And we have to do something about it. We can't just like for, for eons, uh, the United States just not fulfilling its trust responsibility to its native people, indigenous people worldwide. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we'll keep in uh -huh. touch. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Take care. Uh -huh. You're tuned into KAOS 89.3 FM here in Olympia. And uh, this is Raven Redbone. I want to thank my guests, Leticia and Che, for uh, talking with us with Big Mountain Recovery, Sustainable, Sustainable Recovery Project. And uh, I'll post that on my webpage. And again, uh, thank you for tuning in. This is KAOS 89.3 FM in Olympia.